Hi, I'm Borkon. Glad to have you here. I was 10 years late to Minecraft. I had some of the early alpha or beta versions, don't even know which one. I got blown up by a creeper within a minute and I just ignored it since then. But through a complex maze of strange YouTube recommendations I got pulled in last year and I made a survival world in 1.15 that I played around for a few months. I learned a few things, some basic redstone, built a few farms, made some very big holes in the terrain. But I still suck at building. And this is what this series is about. A survival series where you can watch me build brutalist concrete bricks and hopefully yell at me in the comments to fix them. Also, I have had a few farm and redstone ideas I haven't seen anyone else make, so I'll share with them with you in due time. Let's explore this world. I spent quite some time trying to generate a good seed with a massive mushroom island uh, at spawn. I'm not sure if this is actually a good idea, but I actually I never built anything on a mushroom island. On the other hand, I haven't built anything on most biomes. Uh, but it felt like a good idea at the time, so I built, so I got the seed. The problem is, there are no trees to punch here. This truly is a massive island. I think when I generated this, or when I searched for the seed, it was 200,000 blocks of uh, mushroom biome in the middle, all connected to each other. And I still haven't found absolutely anything useful. The island was 700 blocks wide and I around 300 blocks tall. Mm. It's giant. Ooh! A ruined portal, I think they're called. The first interesting thing on this island. Most of the obsidian blocks are here, that's nice. I will only need two obsidian to get to the nether, something that I'm planning to do really, really soon. Let's see if we get any treasure. Ah, well, not bad. Oh, mending! And sharpness on an axe, not exactly sure. I think I'm gonna leave the rest here, just because I don't want to carry it with me when I'm trying to find other stuff. Yeah. That worked. And that. And I guess that's how we get our food. I do have plans for that though. This is not gonna be our food source for long. But I guess it's a good start. Note to self. Remove all spawnable blocks from this island that aren't in the mushroom biome. There is probably some ocean and that's where you get a creeper and a skeleton. Oh yeah, they're even standing on the grass they spawned on and the grass is not mushroom island. Do golden tools break really fast? This is just from killing two mushrooms and a drowned. And I guess I hit that creeper too. Uh, this might be a problem, but I found something. I didn't expect my first wood to come from a shipwreck, but we'll take it. Or we won't, because there are tons of drowned everywhere, and I don't have any weapons because that axe is gonna break any second now. Uh, hello shipwreck, we're gonna come back to you in a few minutes. I see land over there, there. so... That might be interesting to explore, although it looks like desert. Hopefully this is just shore, 
If it's desert, I guess we gotta run around to try to find any wood. And a village! Woohoo! Although I'm not ready to take care of villagers right now, I don't want them to die. I guess I will have to find another village later if everybody there dies. That's not a lot of wood. This really definitely looks like a desert. There wasn't really that much interesting stuff in the village. But I guess it's better than nothing. I have saplings now, so I can start getting some trees on my Mushroom Island. And wood. So yeah, let's go start digging. Now, this is a setback. I planted the sugarcane here around the water. Because, well... You will need sugar cane in every world, so you can make books. Problem is that the mycelium grows back onto this dirt, and it kills the dirt. I did not know that. This is a problem. And the same thing happened with the trees that were here. I mean, fortunately, I managed to save the saplings. But how am I supposed to get anything planted here. This is a big problem. I guess the mycelium won't spread to dirt blocks that are in the middle of this water. And here we can see Borkum in his natural habitat making square shapes out of everything he touches. This is a problem. I really should stop making everything square. It will have to do for now though. And yes, I am digging almost straight down because it's faster. And it's probably a terrible idea, but let's see where this leads us. Oh, wait. I'm at the right level. I survived. So I guess digging straight down isn't that bad at all. And now an hour of mining later. This is what we've got. It's not really great, especially the amount of diamonds here is very, very weak. Uh, I got some obsidian, because I'm gonna need to use it very soon. The amount of redstone is quite decent. Some lapis, and the usual suspects. Not great, though. Come on, diamonds. Get found. Are diamonds less likely in certain biomes? I'm almost starting to believe something is going on here because this tunnel here is 600 ish blocks long we have poke holes on both sides every four blocks and the result of mining is this these are all the diamonds i got not pictured here is the third diamond pick i built that i just broke two minutes ago Something is going on. Or maybe I'm just ridiculously unlucky. I went to a nearby jungle and got some bamboo. So now I'm probably set with the bamboo I'm gonna need for scaffoldings and such. The sugar cane is coming along nicely. The trees are growing nicely. We now have a nice entrance to an underground base. There is a mining tunnel there. I'm starting a new mining tunnel here. Finally got some more diamonds. Still not very much, but it's have to do for now. There is a place here now. I think it's time to go to the nether. Yep, and 
that worked. My plan originally when looking for the seed was to have a crimson forest near the island and it definitely worked. So, the first nether expedition was a success. I got some quartz. I got plenty of warp fungus that I'm gonna need very soon, and some other fun blocks. And soul sand. Soul sand is probably the first thing I'm gonna use right now. Also, the bone blocks in the soul sand valleys are amazing because I currently have no access to any bones, any skeleton spawners or anything like that, so this is gonna be very, very handy. Now we have fast access into my mine and out of it. Woohoo! And I really, really like the chains for keeping the water in. Hmm. Maybe. Probably not. Just because there are new light sources doesn't mean you have to use them. I guess he doesn't appreciate technology. When in doubt, add observers. Good enough. What I'm trying to do here is that I explored the area around me and I only found 12 warp mushrooms and I need slightly more, so this should probably work. should work. So this was quite surprising. I composted all the stuff that I didn't need from this mm -hmm. and I used three stacks of bone meal and I got two thirds of it back. That's almost self-sufficient mm -hmm. and I suspect if I maybe it is possible to make this slightly more efficient so, do we have a self-sufficient automatic bone meal maker? That would be very interesting. Hmm.
so here it is what I would like to call a good enough hoglin farm uh, let me explain how this works the dirt here is where the hoglins can spawn they get afraid of these warp mushrooms or warp fungi actually what are they called warp fungus yes they get afraid of the warp fungus they run away fall into this pit they can fall into this pit because they believe they can walk on top of the trapdoors uh, then we have lava here it's held up by fence gates there is a glass chute just to make sure that they keep falling in more or less a straight line uh, it doesn't have to be glass but I like glass because it allows me to watch when I murder large amounts of mobs and then they fall about I did it 35 blocks I don't think 35 is exactly necessary but it's higher than than, than usual farms because hoglins have have a lot of health and they just fall on top of hoppers which dump stuff into the chests here and when I did testing in a creative world this generated about 2000 drops per hour which is absolutely good enough i can afk here for for one night and i will have food for a month and the leather is a very nice bonus because now i don't have to slaughter cows to get my leather instead i just come here get the leather and can make all the books i want and the afk spot is just as high as possible a few embarrassing things happened when I was building this. I ran out of dirt because I built this pillar out of dirt and forgot that the dirt I had was reserved for the platform there. And of course this should actually be scaffolding, but I could not farm enough string. I spent several nights trying to get chased by spiders and the spiders just did not want to drop string or even spawn. Another thing worth noting is that the platform needs to be properly lit up. If we have light levels 12 or higher, then zombie pigmen will not spawn here. And that makes this a little bit more efficient. It's not a big deal because piglins can still spawn, so it's not exclusively just hoglins spawning. But the piglins don't really matter that much and since we are afking up relatively high up anyway they will despawn so it's quite fine but it's it's nice to prevent the i actually said zombie pigmen i said zombie pigmen i meant zombified piglin now i understand that annoying behavior that i see in some lots of not not just some lots of videos on youtube about minecraft where people are calling things by their old name I've only been playing this game for a couple of months and I already used the wrong name for a thing that got renamed. Zombified piglins. Zombified piglins. Anyway, you want to prevent them from, from spawning. Ghasts cannot spawn here because this is crimson forest biome, so that's fine. But preventing zombified piglins from spawning is useful. Anyway. I'm gonna climb up to my tower now, AFK for a few hours, get some food, get some leather, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye!